Hey folks, welcome to this new video on Worldographer 2025. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the, pro creator of the program. And what we have here is uh, a new update, version 1.05 of the beta, and it's got several new features. One in particular that I want to talk about in some detail is called Dynamic Terrain. This is one of the things that we had promised in the crowdfunding that we had done late last year and we're happy to deliver it. It's something that I particularly wanted to get in after doing some uh, of these Ringlord uh, style icons, uh, a map for, for using these icons for PAX Unplugged late last year. Um, and I ran into an issue where putting in cities and so forth, sometimes it wouldn't cover them up properly. It would cover up too much. You know, it would cover up something that was something behind. It would cover up something that's in the front in the foreground and this new functionality auto generates that to a degree we already had that functionality where if you added features to the map and put them on a layer called uh, something with y ordered then it will draw them uh, from the top of the screen down to the bottom regardless of how you place them uh, but with this new approach with this dynamic terrain you can have it add all these additional features of several mountains or several forest clusters or whatever the terrain requires as you're placing the terrain without having to select all of those individually and add them individually to the map. So that's the key new feature. But in the 1.05 update, we also have a couple of other things like there's a new rotation widget on the features tab where you can just click a dot there to kind of get it to rotate to any even 15 degree increment. You might have seen the prior videos, but wasn't actually released. And then there's also a better layout of all of the buttons on the features and terrain drawer where you can see the labels to a degree. Now, in this case, it's not really big enough. So if you do change your default size of your icon, say if we increase them up to 70 pixels or so, I can even come down a little bit so we can get another column, but you can see those labels all there in some detail. So it's kind of easier to find what you're looking for. Same thing on the terrain, you know, if we increase these to 70 or so, you can see the full labels on those as well. Little things, but you know, all these little things add up. And then there's also a number of new isometric features in the tool. If I switch this to isometric, some of these guys are new. Let me highlight a couple of them. These battles, the primitive battle and the submerged battle, the beacon, the bridge, coral, um, the construction, um, a, a bunch of these things. There's about 30 of them that are new uh, in, in the tool because we had classic versions of them, but we didn't have isometric versions. So I kind of wanted to try to make them uh, one for one. Sometimes they're not always categorized the same way. Like a lot of these are categorized as other, whereas for the um, classics, they might have a different category, but they're all there. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get back to dynamic terrain. Dynamic terrain is really only going to work at the moment with the Ringlord icon set, which is a separate download, a separate purchase uh, for a worldographer, but it is probably our most popular icon set besides the two that are built in. So a lot of folks have it already, and I think almost everybody ended up getting it through Drive Through RPG. Even if you backed a crowdfunding or through Patreon or something, we deliver them through Drive Through RPG. So if you go to your library and get the update, then you'll have some new files in that zip. Let me just flip over here to the Ringlord set. So you'll have some additional icons of dunes in this case, or forest icons, some additional clusters just to increase the variety of, of icons available. And importantly, there's also going to be a Ringlord Dynamic Terrain XML file in there, which you're going to need. So to get these icons into the tool, you go to Configure menu here, and you will add configuration subfolders. Now, there's a couple of different ways to get things in the tool. To me, this is the fastest and the most comprehensive. Otherwise, you're going to be adding in custom things for each of these different types and so forth for terrain features. But doing it in one step here with Add Configuration Subfolders is my go-to. Now, you can show the configuration folder here. This will show you where on your computer it's set to. Now, I've changed mine to a Dropbox that I have, but by default, it's going to be in your Documents folder. 
uh, for your username, and then a world dog of that, which you would create if it's not already created on your machine for you. If you want to change it to something else, like I did, you would go to Change Configuration Folder, and that's just going to bring you a file chooser so you can set it. All right, so then you can go to Add Configuration Subfolders, and this is going to pull up a tree of all the different subfolders in there. And I've done mine by year because we've been doing our Patreon for quite a while. And you can pick the Ring Lord icons there, which are in the 2023 year. Uh, February is when we initially released them. And I've already got mine installed, so I'm going to hit cancel. But you would see a status up here of it showing which file is it loading as it loads them all. And then the second step for setting this up to make it all happen is to go to Configure Dynamic Terrain. So I can open up Configure Dynamic Terrain, and I've already done this, but what you'll do is you don't have to worry about all these other things. This is all if you want to customize it, if you want to set it up from scratch, which I've already done for you with that, with that file. So you can just go to Load Configuration here, and it's going to pull up a file chooser find that uh, XML file, ringlordynamicterrain.xml, find that on your computer, and then this will close, give you a message saying, hey, reopen it to confirm, and then you'll see this. And I'll talk about this part over here first. Now, in our case here, this is set up so that you could have uh, up to three different um, feature types to add in for each terrain. In our cases, though, we, we never needed the third. We, we could have done Badlands Small, Badlands Medium, and Badlands Large. Now, the large ones actually were kind of too big. They would dominate the hex, and there wouldn't be any variety. We chose not to do a third, and we gave you some additional clusters of the smalls to kind of improve that functionality. But what it's doing is, at any time it places, in this case, parchment, Badlands, blank, full columns... So this is only going to apply to blank hexes because we, we're going to be adding in the additional icons on top. And if we picked a, a terrain type that already has an icon built into it that's not just a background, then it's going to look, you know, it's not going to pull off the right look and it's going to defeat the whole purpose of this. So the maximum points is what it's trying to spend uh, when it's placing these icons. This is going to cost six points for a medium and two points for a small. So if it picks medium first, then it's only going to do two more smalls. If it picks three smalls to start with, then it's going to have to pick two more smalls, no mediums, for example. Um, but it's going to spend those points to uh, place a number of features randomly in the hex as you place it. And likewise for these others. Now, farmland, even the medium was kind of big, so we went with just having smalls. So it's going to try to place uh, up to three smalls because the limit is 10 points and each one is three points. So we've done this for you. We've set all this up. But if you wanted to do it on your own, if you wanted to add in some additional terrain, you can type in here to filter it. So if we only want forest, then, you know, we can hit update matching terrain and everything there is going to have, have the word forest in there. If we don't want the Ringlord stuff, if we want to narrow it down to just, say, the classic stuff that's built in, once I hit update matching terrain, you're only going to see classic forest. Then you hit Add Selected, and that will add a new row, which will be blank over here. And then you can hit Apply, although you're also going to want to save your configuration if this is something that you want to go back to. We've already got ours set, so I'm just going to close it. And I'm going to whisk over to a different part of the map here, just to find some interesting stuff going on. A couple of different terrain types. I'm going to zoom out a little bit now. And we can go to the Terrain tab, and I'm going to switch to the Ring Lord set, and it's going through reloading all those icons in there. And I'm going to filter for blank, and I'm also going to filter for columns. One little fix also was that now when you filter, it's going to filter by word. So blank and columns have to be in the name, but it doesn't have to be blank calls. So that, that um, gives a little bit more flexibility in filtering. So these are all the blank ones here. And I can just kind of do a one-for-one one if this is what I want. Say I've got some desert dunes here, right? And so we've got some dunes here as well. And I have to have dynamic on. This toggle here has to be on for this functionality to work. But when I hit dunes, there we go. We get a couple of dune icons. And here we do it again. And you can see the layout of all those dunes is a little bit different. 
Let me scroll down just a touch more, maybe. So we just have one more of these. Now you saw where this cluster of dunes is off a little bit. If you want it, take it, you know, do it again. If that's bothering you, you can control Z because those are separate features. So if you change the terrain later, it's not going to remove those features. You're going to have to remove those features by hand separately. So it's kind of good to do that when you notice it. So you can just control Z, in which case it's going to, you know, undo. So it's going to remove them all. And then I can click again, and this time here they're all centered in there. Now a little bit of a pro tip though, I'm going to undo that again. And a little bit of a pro tip is that it's kind of waiting where to place them based on where you click. So if I click on this side of the hex a little bit, you're going to see that these are all going to be placed a little bit more towards this side. Now, I don't mind that these are breaking out of the hex. In fact, that's part of the look that I'm going for is, you know, that I want it to be, you know, predominantly the same thing, but I do want to span the hexes a little bit here and there. So that's okay with me. So now I can do rocky stuff and I can fill in the rest of these and you know, you can see that. And if it's not giving you enough, so for me, you know, this stuff is not really enough. I would like some more. So I can go back to that configure. In fact, let's do it that way. So I'm going to undo those. And I'm going to go back to configure dynamic terrain. And I'm going to do desert, rocky, blank, full columns is what we're on. And let me expand this window here so we just see all the columns but desert rocky full columns blank and small and i'm going to set the small to say only or i'm going to set the medium to three so it's going to do more rocky medium hit apply close and now i should get more of those mediums in there and i think that you can see that the density of how many of these are getting dropped is in fact increased. That one was also not spread out at all. So you kind of do have to play with things a little bit. Undo is your friend. If you want to pull them apart a little bit more, you can just go to the features, select one, pull it apart, and kind of expand them this way. So that's, that's what you can do. I would do it kind of more as a, oop, let me, let me delete that one, get that out of the way. Started to rotate because I must have accidentally grabbed the rotate there. All right, so that gives you an idea of those. Let's just continue and fill up this screen with, with all this. So let me go back to Rocky and fill in these additional Rocky ones. And then we can do farmland blank. So some of this open area I'm going to do as farmland, and some I'm going to do as just blank blank as if it's just open, kind of prairie, whatever you want to think of it as. There you go. Not too difficult to do at all. And then we've got for forest next alphabetically. So let's do forest deciduous here. And I don't really have a difference for light versus heavy deciduous. So this is something where I can just add in the deciduous forest like that. And then I can go into features and as long as I've got this set to above terrain Y ordered, that would be key. I can then go in and add some additional deciduous forest here. And I can pick, you know, do I want the, the mediums or the larges and which type do I want? I can turn on this randomize so that it does do the A, B, or C. So even though I've picked B there, it might, you know, in that case it picked A. It picked A again, and here it picked B. So if I want to make those denser looking, I can do that, you know, and I can even, and, and you can see as I'm placing these, so I'm going to place this right in the middle of these, right? And it's still drawing it properly, where it's drawing these other ones that are above it before that one, and then, then it draws this next one further down. So again, it's a Y-ordered draw where it's drawing from the top of the screen to the bottom, regardless of how I placed it, as long as I've got Y-ordered in the name of the layer. All right. Back to our terrain, though, we were going to do grassland. So we've got some of these grassland icons here. And we can fill those in. And then forested hills. So deciduous forested hills are here. And then I can do my plain hills. Oop, that's these. And then I've got my mountains, and these are mostly just plain mountains. 
and there you go. So you can see, oh, we missed the hills. We've got a forested hills up there on the very top, deciduous forested hills there. And one, one more hills that I missed. So there you have it. There's creating a world map with the ring lord icons with the dynamic terrain on so that these mountains you know and all the features you know you saw before with the with the forest but it comes in even handier with the dynamic terrain you're always going to be getting a different combination a different layout of of your mountains and they're going to be drawn in the proper order but also when i'm adding in the different icons for example a city so i like these darker icons and I know that they're a little bit large just for printing reasons. So the, the base icons are large, but if I set them down to like 50%, and if I want to have a, a city in the middle of these trees here, I can put that down there. And you can see that it's tucked behind those trees appropriately, you know? And if I pull it out or if I select it and we move it around, we're going to see this effect where we're going to see how it pops above those other trees. You see where once we got past the midpoint, of this icon on the side, it it becomes in front. Whereas once I go there, now it's behind, you know? So that's that's the effect that we're going for. And then if I, you know, throw in a bunch of villages here. I like the darker color icons for these just because it helps them stand out a little bit. So if I have a couple of farming villages out here. Um, now occasionally you're going to have a placement like this last one. I did that on purpose. This last farming village got placed and it's above the center point. You know, this icon is smaller, so it's above the center point of this other icon. So occasionally you're gonna need to play with that. And so for something like that, I can just move it to the layer above and then it's gonna be on top uh, regardless. And then if I, let me put down another village back to the way that it was. So this here, the Y ordered draw is going to be just fine and so on. Uh, as soon as I get started making these maps, I want to start filling them out completely so we can put in a beacon in the in the mountains to warn of some danger up there. And we can have a cave entrance in the mountains. And these are kind of good to play with as well as far as showing we're still on the above terrain Y ordered, but showing where it's going to pop behind as I drag it along. So if we want to tuck it in these mountains, we can do that. And if I want to take this mountain range and drag drag them down a little bit to kind of get them out of the way to kind of show that a little bit more, I can I can do that as well. I can play with these, move them around to get the look that I want. But again, the Y ordered has been in Worldographer for several months. Um, in fact, it might even predate 2025 the Y ordered thing. But Combining it with the dynamic terrain really unlocks it and makes it easier to use because you can have it place all this, all these features of these different mountains or the forests or dunes or whatever the case might be all in one step as you're setting things up. So I think that that covers it. I'm going to have some links down below the video here where you can get the, the 2025 update if you're not working with Worldographer 2025 yet. Um, and if you've got it already and you're on 1.04 or earlier of the beta, then of course you're going to need to download and reinstall the, the new version to get, get this functionality, as well as the link to the Ring Lord icons. If you don't have it already, then you can, you can purchase those at Drive Through RPG, and we'll have the link to that down below. I'm, I'm really excited, and hopefully you can tell, about the maps that these can help you make. Thanks a bunch. Please do watch, watch more of the videos, because I've been trying to get to a point where I can turn off ads, and if we get another, you know, 15% of watch hours over the course of a year beyond where we're at right now, I can then turn off the ads. I don't want to make you guys watch ads to see an instructional video, so there you have it.